Mayor of uh, Port Douglas Shire Council, uh, Michael uh, Kerr. Michael, uh, good to see you. Thanks for your time uh, again. Uh, yesterday, um, we were talking about the trouble uh, you were having with regard to access in and out of places such as Port Douglas and Mossman as well. Has there been any improvement there? Yes, yeah, certainly has been. Uh, we got uh, quite a few people on the ground yesterday afternoon from the ADF and from other resources such as Q Queensland Fire and Rescue, Queensland P Police. Um, so last night we had our first meeting and it was a, such a relief to have a room full of people that have uh, got a lot of experience in dealing with these types of situations and in the past. And, you know, it certainly made me leave the room feeling a lot more confident than what I was prior to that. So what are you getting out of that meeting? Well, there's certainly... they listening to them talk they know how to deal with these situations they've done a lot of work when they had the floods down south in both townsville and brisbane and they've gone into those plan of actions now on what to do how to do it and where we go from now and the first thing of course is the priority of getting to those people north of the river which we still haven't been able to get to yet um so that will be action today we will be looking to see how the ferry is so if we can get the ferry on the ground in or in the water to get across to the other side um, but that'll also allow us to get machinery over there to start working across there. And from what we can see from the uh, helicopter footage that we're now seeing, um, there's some massive land sites and uh, infrastructure damage over there. So j just back on that earlier point, how many still remain uh, stranded and where, Michael, in, in your shire? Well, from the north of the river, there's about 750 people. Um, you know, that live on the from the Daintree and Cow Bay right through to Cape Tribulation, Dagara, China Camp, and they're all the ones that uh, we want to get on the ground to. I know the ADF did manage to get to see some of them yesterday afternoon, um, so we are now working to clear those pathways so that we can get access to machinery in there as well. How long do you expect that to take? How long are they saying that? Well, I mean, hopefully, as I said, if the water conditions on the Daintree River today are suitable, we will get the ferry in the water later today and okay. um, go from there. But it's, it's all based on the water level and how much debris is on the cables. If the cables are even still there, we're going to have to... It could take a little while to get just get the ferry in the water. 750 people, though, that's a lot. Have you been able to get a word to them, though? Are they OK? Yes, we've now got communication to them. There's a lot of people there. Quite a few have lost their properties. Uh, we're getting some photos of houses completely buried in mud. Um, so the landslides up there were quite extensive. Um, and yes, again, as I said, there's going to be a lot of work on infrastructure getting up there and getting that cleaned up. Seen a lot of pictures as well, Michael. Uh, the access roads in and out of Port Douglas, uh, just because of all those landslips. Um, how much of a problem uh, is that still? And how long do you think that could be before, you know, those roads are cleared? Well, Captain Cook Highway directly into Port Douglas, that could be quite a few weeks before that's cleared. Um, they've had specialists fly across that now and there's a, some large boulders that are in quite in a risk situation where they could come crashing down onto the highway. So that one mm. won't be open for several couple of weeks. But wow. the other roads uh, from Mossman through to Mariba, hopefully that will be open in the, in the next two days. Um, they have got it to a point that emergency services and food supplies can utilise that road to come in uh, later this afternoon. So we will start getting supplies coming through at least. And uh, access to Port Douglas will be definitely there in the next week. Um, and as I've been saying to people, you know, Port Douglas was unscathed in this. It was only from Mossman north of the Shire that's going to be a, a long-term repair. So what are you going to need long term? I mean, as we know, tourism in the far north uh, uh, suffered greatly uh, because of the pandemic. Uh, and now you've got this, uh, which is going to cause some problems as well, particularly in the busy Christmas period. I mean, what, what, what are you going to need to keep businesses alive, Michael? Tourists. That's the basic answer to it. You know, give us a couple of weeks to get everything sorted as far as our roads safe again so you can get here. Um, but as I said, Port Douglas is open. The hotels are there. You know, we, the restaurants are there, the brief boats are there. You know, we can certainly still show our tourists a good time when they get here. It may just take them a little bit longer to get into Port Douglas, but it's a great scenic route going through Mariba, checking out the chocolate factories and the, all the, uh, the different mango fruit farms that we've got up in the tablelands. OK. Do you have some rest? Did you have some rest last night, Michael? Uh, we've got some rest in. Um, unfortunately, we've got no water at the moment. The whole, pretty much the whole of the Shire is out of water at the moment. We've had a lot of issues with the water treatment plant. Uh, so pretty much everyone's on bottled water as we speak. Um, and we'll have to just reassess that one today and see where we go okay. from there. Bottled water, good point. All right, Michael Kerr, thanks for your time as always.